We're on the road with Mickey, we're gonna have some fun. Regardless of the rain or sun, our trip has just begun. So buckle up, let's go, we're about to start the show. And maybe if you like us, you'll see where else we'll go. Hi everybody, I'm Sophie, he's Mike, and she's Brenda, and welcome to On the Road with Mickey. If you're returning for another adventure with us, welcome back. We are so glad you have returned safely. And if this is your first episode with us and you're new here, welcome. It's so nice to meet you, and I'm going to show you the reins today. First up, we have our cheddar from the Big Cheese, which is basically our Disney news snippets. And then after that, we have our feature topic, which is what we talk about for most of the episode. And then after that, we have our This Day in Disney History, brought to you by me. And after that is our game of Who's Who. And that is brought to you by Mike, my dad. A oh, fair warning, I'm almost never wrong when it comes to this game. I almost always win it. And then after that, Brenda will be giving us a quote from the big man himself, Walt Disney, and it's just going to be amazing. So buckle up, keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the car at all times, make sure you're safe, fasten your seat belts, all that good stuff, and we will see you on the road. It's time to get going. Let's go! Hey everyone, I'm Mike, and she's Sophie. And she's Brenda. Hi, everyone. And he's Grogu. And we're on the road with Mickey. This is Season 2, Episode 26 for June 28, 2021. And our feature topic is our favorite Disney weenies. And we're talking about buildings. Yeah. We're not talking about hot dogs, so... We know it's a strange title for it. We'll get into why they're called that in a bit. But for now, I think it's time for our cheddar from the big cheese. And boy, do we have a bunch. Yeah. So, Brenda, why don't you start us off? Okay, well, on October 1st, 2021, two new shows are going to start at Disney World. They're two nighttime spectaculars at Magic Kingdom is Disney Enchanted. That will premiere on October 1st, and over at Epcot, Harmonious will finally be premiering. Yeah, oh, both wow. on October 1st. Yeah, yep. I'm excited. Very exciting. Yeah. And, and we also... will be there. We'll be there at the Magic Kingdom for the first showing, Sophie, of Enchanted. Wait, really? Yeah, we'll be there. Wow. And <laughs> so. here I was going to get into Epcot without even touching on that. Also, on October 1st, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is going to be opening over at the France Pavilion in Epcot. And boy, am I excited. Looks like we'll have to check that out sometime after we see Enchanted. Yep. And also coming to Walt Disney World on October 1st, this new daytime show coming to Animal Kingdom called Disney Kite Tales. These are elaborate three-dimensional kites of Simba, Zazu, King Louie, Baloo, and more. And they're going to take flight above the Discovery River Amphitheater and soar to the beat of beloved Disney songs. And oh, wow. My understanding is this is going to be something where you'll be able to see it multiple times throughout the day. So there will be a lot of different times when you can see it. But I think it would be really cool. Oh, I need to see that. That would be so cool. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to record that. I will. Yeah, that'll definitely be a live stream or something. Good. All right. Well, this is the final thing. And keep in mind that all of this is taking place on October 1st. That's how you know it's an important day. And it's also Disney's anniversary. So, of course, it's all going to be happening on October 1st. But also, coming to Walt Disney World as part of the world's most magical celebration, 
the Disney Fab 50, which is 50 special golden character sculptures that will be placed throughout the four theme parks. They will make their debut on October 1st, and I'm going to share with you a concept image for what they are going to look like. Okay, you go ahead and share it, Sophie. And they will look something like this. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Cute. Yeah, and, I think, and there's going to be 50 of these all scattered throughout the four theme parks. Yeah, there's not just these two. There are going to be 48 more. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to be at various parks too, right? Yep. Yes, all scattered all throughout the them. four. Great. Yep. All right. Well, that wraps up a very eventful cheddar from the big cheese. I don't know how we're going to top that, but we're going to try. And just a reminder, don't forget to connect with us. All the links for our different social media ways you can connect with us are located in the notes. All right. Okay. So our feature topic is our favorite Disney weenies. And the first thing I want to get out of the way is what the heck is a Disney weenie? Okay. So I'm going to tell the story as I read it and it all, it all tracks back to Walt Disney. So Walt had a poodle named Duchess Disney, who was also known as Dee Dee. And he got Dee Dee after their previous dog, Suni, passed away. Dee Dee was very much Walt's poodle, and she would follow him everywhere. When he would come home from work, Walt would take two hot dogs, and Walt called them weenies because that's what they were called in Chicago where he grew up. He would take the two hot dogs, he would eat one as a snack, and he would give one to Dee Dee. But what Walt noticed was how she would follow exactly where the weenie was moved. So if you move it around over here, her eyes will follow it, and back over here, and so on. So Walt took that memory and told it to the WED designers. That's the, um, the people that became the Imagineers. Mm -hmm. And he told the designers for Disneyland that he wanted to lead the guests to move to certain areas of the park. They took that concept and they ran with it. And the concept of Disney weenies was born. So oh, wow. what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some of our favorite Disney weenies. And I just thought, you know, we might give one or two each. And just a reminder that not all Disney weenies are the same, and there's not just one at each park, too. So mm -hmm. just keep that in mind. And, um, and listeners, as you're hearing us talk about it, tell us what your favorite Disney weenies are and what you think of this and if you even knew what they were called. So, so just yeah. keep that in the back of your mind. But Sophie... I'm going to turn it over to you first, if you don't mind. Well, all right. I will say that the decision was very difficult to make. Mm -hmm. That's but... why I said two. <laughs> or more, if you want to talk more. Yeah, but like, I still, I couldn't narrow it down to just two. So the one that came to mind right off the bat for me was the fountain in front of Epcot. It's the new one, but when you go into the front entrance of the Epcot Park, obviously your eye is attracted towards that big, giant, glowing sphere, mm -hmm. but to me, it also goes downward and it looks at the fountain as well, because that fountain glows more than the sphere ever could. And I just love how pretty it is. And I love the photo shots that I get of it. You can never take a bad picture of that fountain. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And why don't we kind of go around the, around the table like we normally do when we're given like our top ones? Yeah. So, Brenda, 
What do you have for a favorite Disney weenie? Well, (laughs) (laughs) in case you can't tell from the picture, um, you know, I mean, one of my very favorite Disney weenies is certainly the Hollywood Tower Hotel. I mean, yeah. It that ride and that building draws me with everything it has. It's almost just magnetized. I just am drawn to it in so many different ways. Yeah, not not the least of which is that it's at the very end of the of the street. So yeah, you you get to the street and you turn and you see it from way at the beginning. Yeah, you know you're getting closer and closer, and it draws you right, like you said, it draws you right yeah. down to it. It sure does. So it calls to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unlike another ride that's over that way called the Rock and Roller Coaster, that one's just out of the way. So that's how you know that the Tower of Terror is better. <laughs> yeah, it calls you for sure. <laughs> what about you, Mike? What is your first one? Well, like Sophie, it's kind of hard. And I think some of mine aren't going to be ones that you initially might think of. Um, Maybe I'm totally wrong, and maybe they will be ones you think of. But um, for me, I would say my first one isn't Spaceship Earth at Epcot. um, And it's not the fountain in front, because you're right at the beginning of the park. Mm -hmm. But um, actually... To me, what I always notice when I'm entering World Showcase right at the beginning, not from the International Gateway, the first thing I notice is the American Adventure Pavilion across the World Showcase Lagoon. And Mm -hmm. that always catches my eye. It doesn't matter where I am. I can glance up and there's the whole pavilion right there. And so I think that one almost acts like a weenie for me. I gotcha. Ah. That's a good so, one. So that one is one I'm going to go with. It's a good one. All right. So I guess that leads on to my next favorite Disney weenie. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I really did not want to go for like the four iconic ones, which are Cinderella Castle, Spaceship Earth, the Hall the Tower of Terror, and the Tree of Life. But at the same time, it is just so hard not to. And you know, I... You notice I used that loophole. My first Disney weenie was not Spaceship Earth. It was the Fountain of Nations in front of it. Mm -hmm. But I can't really... I can't really say that this one is not iconic and i'm gonna go with cinderella castle which is in my background but specifically specifically it's got to be decorated for one of the holidays and it's got to be at night like this this is beautiful i like it so much better at night than i do it during the day during the day it's just pretty but this is beautiful now take this And put a thousand, a million icicle lights on it and Mm -hmm. design it for Christmas. And then, chef's kiss. That is my Disney weenie. That's right. That is another Disney weenie for me. Yeah. And like you said, Sophie, it's there. And it is iconic. and, And it draws you to it because you're going down Main Street and you see it getting closer and closer and closer. And, you know, on the flip side... Some people say, tragically, in some regards, because you're on your way out, but the Main Street Railroad Station, Walt Disney World Mm -hmm. Railroad Station, is also a weenie, but for the opposite reason, and it's drawing you to leave at the end of the day. Yeah, with your tears coming down your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. But... No sadness. We're at Disney right now. At least we are in our you're minds. Gonna, yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> it's a small world Lucky. after all. <laughs> Lucky. Oh. So anyway, what's next on your list, Brenda? Well, mine is, my next one is not 
probably very popular as far as the Disney weenie goes, but it is my first memory and reaction to my very first trip in 1979. And that is the view of the monorail going into the contemporary. Oh, yeah. So when I see that, it's like, it's just, it, I mean, I can feel my heart change when I see that. Mm -hmm. It was just the most magnificent thing. I mean, I was 15 years old and I had never in my life seen something like that ever. It was so magnificent. And I still get that same feeling every time I see it. It's yeah. just, it's it is magical. amazing. Yeah. It really is. The idea of putting a train in the air and then making it go through a building. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. It is amazing. And they have on the construction for the monorail, they have at the entrance and exit, they have some sort of flap or something that, mm -hmm. um, at least this is what I read, maybe it's urban myth, but they have some sort of way, if it's raining out, to keep the water from dropping into like onto the ground in the in the hotel in the resort. Good deal. Good deal. So somehow they take care of that idea. And I don't I don't know that I know exactly how they do it, but but, but we're not surprised they do it, right? Yeah, yeah. not surprised at all. <laughs> <laughs> so but that's a good one. And you know, on a similar note, um a lot of people, especially since up until nineteen eighty two there was no other park. Right. You know? So um, they say that going up World Drive to go park, to go to the Magic Kingdom, you are driving so far, like five miles off of I-4 to yeah. get to where you park, to get to the Magic Kingdom. And that's almost like the Magic Kingdom itself is the weenie. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, sure. The whole park. Yeah. So... Yeah. So is that and your I, second one? Well, I thought about it, but because I, I always I wrote a post back when the Magic Kingdom turned forty, I think it was the series, and for me, and I was talking about my first year, which was also nineteen seventy nine, um, and how how it was like we were in Florida, and then as we got off of the interstate and we headed towards. Uh, Towards where we would go to the Magic Kingdom, it was almost like you you're leaving Florida behind and you're coming to that world, you know. That's right. And yeah. so, so to me that 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 brings back memories of that first trip because I, I the sad thing is I don't remember what I really did on that first trip. I just remember the feeling, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but anyway, so my second one, um, I. Th think i'm going and, and it's not one that you notice immediately because you kind of have to navigate around to where you can see it but um expedition everest the mountain for, for sure. expedition everest certainly does draw you to it from multiple angles you know because of the way that the animal kingdom is laid out i actually yeah. don't think of the tree of life as a weenie because mm. to me it's it's kind of blended in with other trees and everything in that area. And so for me, it's hard to pick out until you're right there on it. And you know so what? that you're right. to yeah. me, that makes it not very much of a weenie. You're but right. but it's still incredible when you get there and you're looking at how detailed it was that they made it. For but, sure. um, but to me, Expedition Everest, when you're in the right spots, it draws you to it because Definitely. It's, you can see it from a lot of different areas of the park. Yes, the Forbidden Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, in that case, a lot of you guys actually listed off a bunch of the ones that I was going to say. But I still have more up my sleeve because this is honestly... <laughs> uh, this is... Picking my favorite Disney weenies was honestly harder than picking from a list of a poll that we might be putting on the Facebook group. Yeah. Cough, cough. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, that poll had like 11 choices. I think I had like 20 on my list. So I'm going to go with my next one. Yay. And that one was actually the Grand Floridian Resort. Really? How is yes. it a weenie to you? To me, it's a weenie because when you get out of the park, you're looking straight across the water. And then if I were to look, say, just a tiny bit to my right, I would see a glistening white building with these beautiful red roofs on it. Mm -hmm. And plus, I have such a special connection to the Grand Floridian. I've only stayed at it once, but it made me feel like I was a princess when I was there. Plus, it's got the wedding pavilion, and <laughs> cough, cough, hint, hint, daddy, I kind of want a Disney wedding once I find someone to marry, but enough about that. We've still got some years. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we do have some years. So I'm waiting for on... my invite. <laughs> oh, you'll definitely have an invite. Yeah. Because, you know, we'll Maybe. need someone to broadcast this live for the podcast. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to need someone to show them my wedding dress. That's right. I'll be happy to do that. But anyway, so yeah, yeah. I, just, I really love the Grand Floridian. And if, if I could stay there every time we went to Disney, I would. But then we wouldn't get to go to Disney as often. That's so true. it's a fair trade. Yeah. Yeah. And we just get to go have dinner there instead and go through the gift shops and see the gingerbread house. Yeah, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll I'll say one more too, since we're kind of leaning that way. <laughs> but I'll cut it off was, after that. I wasn't gonna cut it off right then. <laughs> we could have fit five each in here, I think. Well, this one is one of the two newest, and it is the Hallelujah Mountains. I I Ooh. can't put my finger on that but I don't know if it's because it reminds me of flight of passage I don't know what it is but when you're looking up at it and it's got and like all the waterfalls are around and it's just this heavenly looking mountain of green I mean I there's some draw to that there's like a I don't know there's I guess maybe it's just related to avatar and the feeling you get when when it's like it's so beautiful you know it's what? Really beautiful. It is. And I had never even thought of it. And Brenda, you know, you, you got me because I never even heard it called Hallelujah Mountains. It's beautiful though, isn't it? Yeah, and it fits yeah. in really well with that. Yeah, because when you go back there, you know, which is your first stop when you get into the park before the park opens, and you it's like you see it from mm -hmm. back and you just it just it's just beautiful. I mean, yeah. the way they did that whole Pandora area is gorgeous. Yeah. Just yeah. gorgeous. They really immersed you into it. You yeah. know, it, it's really funny because, you know, when they first announced that they were going to make Pandora at Animal Kingdom, I was like, what had they been smoking? You know, yeah, and I wasn't an avatar. I had to go watch Avatar to figure out what the what the draw was. Yeah, and then we saw it, and it was incredible. And it's absolutely mind blowing to think that that used to be Camp Mickey Minnie. Yes, you know, yeah, and it look yeah. it you you would never know that if you didn't know That's the right. parks. You would never have known that. And but, that, I mean, at night, it's so beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful at night. Absolutely. So, yeah. well, I have a picture to share. Oh, good. So, this is a picture for Sophie. <gasps> hmm? There you go, Soph. There you go. <gasps> Serotonin! <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who are listening on the podcast, this is the Grand Floridian that he showed me. Mm -hmm. And... Ah, uh, serotonin. Beautiful. <laughs> and I'm going to share. I think I missed talking about one. Um, or I didn't remember to put it in his cheddar. Um, and I have one more that I'm going to talk about too. But 
I wanted to share what the cupcake for <gasps> the 50th is going to look like. Yes. Yes. And uh, that yeah, is absolute. And I remember the cupcake for Disneyland for the 60th and how incredibly delicious that was. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh uh, my gosh. Oh, wait. But I thought, just saw a picture of that and I was like, I got to show my girls because we got to talk about food for that something. down for sure. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I have one more that I want to focus on. One more um, Disney weenie. And it was, <laughs> I actually have like Sophie, I probably have six or eight more. Um, yeah. I thought about yeah. showing. Showing my um, picture of the sorcerer's hat, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm, not gonna go <laughs> I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. It was it was mine. Um, so anyway, um, my other one that I thought I would talk about is is the um, space mountain. Over at Tomorrowland. Yep. And the reason I was, I was struggling with that, I was trying to make sure everything was working right. But um, Space Mountain is a weenie. It kind of itself, it, it doesn't stand out, you know, entirely. You have to know it's there and you have to go down Tomorrowland and then you start seeing it as you get near the end. Um, you see it coming up and you can, and it's really cool if, if it's night because sometimes it's it's done up different at night so it looks neat um but the other thing about tomorrowland in and of itself is i wonder how much the new tron roller coaster oh when it opens goodness. how much of a weenie is that gonna be oh it's gonna be fantastic yeah Fant that's it's I gonna be said. glowing it's gonna be fantastic but, you yeah. know, even when you're driving down toward Magic Kingdom and you see Space Mountain from far, mm -hmm. you know, when you're not yeah. in the park, it's not like when you yeah. get into the park, it's hidden. But before you get into the park, it's you see it because it's oh, right yeah. there by the edge. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. But Tron is going to glow in the. it's going to be. I cannot wait for that thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is going to be fabulous. I agree. So. So, girls. Why don't we stop it here and maybe in the future we'll add a couple more. We'll say, hey, Aww. I just thought of a weenie and here we go. And, um, you know, kind of like an ad hoc sort of thing down the yep. road. But Sounds um, good. Does that sound good to you, Soph? All right. I'll okay. stop talking about it for now. <laughs> All right. Well, then let's change subject a little bit and let's look at disney history for june 28th so guess what sophie you're up again yeah, yeah. all right <laughs> so you don't have to stop talking oh well, yeah but i have to stop talking about the disney weenies anyway <laughs> 1955 june 28th walt disney writes a letter from the Disney Studios to his employees and others who assisted on the creation of his new Anaheim Park, Disneyland. In this letter, he wishes to invite them all to attend its grand debut on July 17th. And remind me, how old is Disneyland going to be this year? This year, Disneyland is going to be 66. Yeah, you're right. Because the 65th got pandemic out. Yeah. That was... Well, anyway. it looks like we'll have to party extra hard this year. Exactly. And now, to kick off the celebration, I'm going to read you some of the letter. As we come down the home stretch in the building of Disneyland, I know you are as happy as I am with the way in which this dream of ours is coming to full life. Your contribution to the construction, the development, and the details of the park has made it possible for us to foresee that we will open Disneyland virtually completed. 
The few days remaining before our television preview on Sunday, July 17th will be all important to us. But I know that we can count on you and every one of your fellow employees to do your utmost to meet our schedule. I would like to cordially invite you and your family to participate with us in the thrill of the Disneyland premiere. Within the next few days, we will have your preview tickets available. They will be distributed to you at Disneyland and will assure you and your family for a wonderful afternoon as our guests on all the rides and amusements in Disneyland. I am sure your family will be as proud of you of your efforts as all of us are. Sincerely, Walt Disney. Oh, nice. I love it. Yeah. Eee. Oh my gosh, if I had gotten one of those letters, if I had worked on Disneyland and gotten one of those letters, I would have been over the moon. Let no me tell doubt. you. Yeah. You no see these? Doubt. Yeah. These are the tickets Sophie and I had. For the Disneyland 60 celebration. Awesome. So. I didn't realize you still had them. Yep. Yep. They're threadborn, threadbare <laughs> and kind of paper worn. But yeah. they still kinda say like Disneyland this, 60. Kind of yeah. like this Beauty and the Beast card. It's just one for a digital movie. It's definitely not a ticket. But it's got Walt Disney's signature on it. So. Yeah. yeah, and that one's hard plastic. But anyway. Yeah. All right. Yay. Good. Good history, Yay. Sophie. Very good. History. Thank you. Yeah. So that takes us to stump the sofa. Dun dun dun. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kid. <laughs> she and I are on the same wavelength. Scary, Sophie. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> oh, no denying that one. And two, we got a two for out of that. Oh, God. Okay. Let's see if you can guess this who's who character. All right. Lay it on me. I know mommy sent me a red herring and I did not listen, so we'll see how this goes. I think you're going to get it. This character was arrogant and obnoxious. Cusco. No. It could be so many people. Yeah. This ar- this character, <laughs> this arrogant character... <laughs> This character learned what's really important. Ah. Still Cusco. No. I got somebody else. What's another one? Naveen. No. You got another another hint? I've got one more hint. The number 95. Lightning McQueen. <laughs> That's the giveaway. That was the giveaway. What, yeah. Who did you think before Hans. That? I thought Hans. No. Hans of the no. Southern Isles because he's so Hans arrogant. Nev- Hans never learned what was but right. He he's learned. he's still yeah. serving his punishments, shoveling manure in Frozen <laughs> Ever After. Yeah. Well, I have some bit of, did you know, that I think is really cool. Yeah. And also... Um. Well, just really cool. Did you know that Lightning's racing number was originally going to be fifty-seven? Really. And the fifty-seven is a reference to John Lasseter's birth year. Oh. But the filmmakers decided to change it to ninety-five. I see. And did you know? That lightning is named after deceased Pixar supervising animator Glenn McQueen. Oh, I think wow. that I is that. that I didn't either. And I think that is absolutely that's what makes Disney and Pixar what they are. Yeah. That is great. That is that amazing. Is, talk about an honor 
Yeah. His family, you know? Yes. Yeah. The last one you knew, Lightning did, originally did not think he needed headlights because <laughs> racers always race in lit stadiums. <laughs> and then, yeah. of course, don't forget the, the, the Rusty's guys. That's like my brother. He's always lit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I thought you would get it, Sophie. Yeah. Very good, Sophie. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Lightning McQueen is our show. Yay. And that takes us to Brenda and Walt Disney. A little bit of Walt. A little bit of Walt goes a long, long way. That's what we're calling yeah. it now. A little bit of Walt. That's right. That's right. Well, That's here a, is yeah. one thing that Walt Disney said. And I hope we haven't said this before. <laughs> the important thing is the family. If you can keep the family together, and that's the backbone of our whole business, catering to families, that's what we hope to do. Walt Disney. Yeah. Keeping the family together. Absolutely. Family is very important to him, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very sure. important to all of us. That's mm. the most yeah. important. Yeah. Even if Bob you don't always realize it. Because there's unfortunately some people who don't think about it. But but you're absolutely right. Keeping the family together. I don't think we've used that one before. Good. I hope no. not. If we have, then <laughs> it was we need to hear repeating. it again. Good. Yeah. Exactly. Good, good. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for listening. Brenda, Sophie, Grogu, thanks for joining me. And that wraps us up for this week next week is fourth of july weekend and yeah. we are going to be talking about disney patriotism mm-hmm. yep something about that you know something about that we're we're still figuring this out you know last year we did this sophie and i and we called it patriotism at disney this year um we're calling it disney patriotism or America, did the American way of Disney or celebrating Red. America or Red, yeah. White, and Disney. Red, White, Ooh. and Disney. Anyway, that's Seems that topic. Brandis. We'll figure out the topic title. <laughs> Just know we're going to be talking about how awesome yeah. Disney and, uh, and America are together. Yep. So, so All we right. hope you'll join us. And thank you so much for joining us today. And we will. See you, See you on, on the, the road. road. Bye. Bye. Bye.